You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to the Linda Fostek Show. Disasters are all around us. Turn on the news and Mother Nature is on a rampage. Personal disasters put our lives on hold or derail us completely. Join Linda as she invites you to become part of the solution. It's time to get off the worry-go-round with your host, Linda Fostek. Welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. If you would like to join in the conversation, please call in at 866 451 1451. Don't let the next disaster catch you by surprise. Get your free disaster planning roadmap and disaster checklist today at thecrisisplanner.com. Well, it's another week, and we are in the middle of winter, believe it or not. Uh, Winter is finally here. Um, The center part of the country is in a deep, deep freeze, sub-zero temperatures, and horrible wind chills are really driving the temperatures down to, like, minus 30 and minus 40 in some places. Um, We haven't seen those temperatures all year, and... uh, those temperatures, those cold temperatures are kind of moving eastward. We're expecting some pretty cold nights coming up in the low teens here on in, on Long Island in New York. Um, we had our third snowstorm in a week. <laughs> um, in the Northeast, or we had another, well, I had another seven inches of beautiful white fluffy snow on my backyard, which covered all the dirt and yuckiness of the last snowstorm. Uh, fortunately, it was very light and fluffy and was cleared very quickly, and that made things a lot better than they would have been if it was one of those heavy, wet snowfalls that we tend to get. Uh, I think it was because it was so cold that we uh, had that light snow. Um, And it did look beautiful for a day, and now it's starting to look dirty again. But I guess we've got more snow coming later on this week. Isn't that fun? Um, Winter is here, and it is February, and that is when we tend to get most of our snow here in the Northeast. Uh, For all of you people down in Florida suffering with your 85-degree temperatures and 75-degree temperatures, and even areas of the state where you might be experiencing some 50s and 60s, I envy you and wish I was experiencing some 50s and 60s about now. (laughs) I actually was able to do my laundry last week. The temperature did get up to 41 degrees, which meant that my pipe from my washing machine was no longer frozen and I was able to get some clean clothes done. So that made me very happy. Um, I have a dry well that my washing machine drains into and unfortunately the pipe isn't buried deep enough so when we have this really bitter bitter cold weather the pipe tends to freeze and my washing machine will not drain so it it was a little bit of a challenge but at least this year it looks like I won't be making a trip to the laundromat which that also makes me very happy um Now, as far as COVID is concerned, lots of good news to report for a change. Uh, Case counts are down almost 30% in the last three weeks. That is very exciting news, considering it is the middle of winter, and this is when people do tend to get sick more often. Um, And that's across the country, even in areas that had been experiencing a surge in cases. This is the lowest, they've had the lowest case count since that Thanksgiving um, weekend. 
so things are definitely looking up in case counts as well as hospitalizations the lowest number of people in the hospital right now and new admissions are down so things are definitely looking up and you know so why is that i mean we've had christmas we've had all kinds of things going on big gatherings people have been getting together and why are the cases going down well i think partly due to the fact that vaccinations are finally here and at this point they're vaccinating 1.2 to 1.4 million people per day across the country, which is very exciting. Now, some states are doing a better job of getting the distribution out there than others. Um, And, you know, there's logistical challenges everywhere because we've never done this before. So I guess we all have to be a little bit patient, which is okay. Um, And it's estimated that at this point already, 41 million Americans have been vaccinated, which that's like 10% of the population, which is very, very exciting. And then they also estimate that 100 million Americans have already had COVID, which means that they they have antibodies, um, they are not susceptible to getting COVID. So therefore, almost 140 million people are you know, we're, we're getting closer and closer to that that critical number that they need in order for us to have that quote-unquote herd immunity that they keep talking about that will allow us all to get back to some semblance of normalcy. Um, very excited about that. I actually had my second um, dose of the vaccine on Thursday uh, as part of CERT, which is the Community Emergency Response Team. Um, I've been volunteering at the vaccine um, center for the last uh, five weeks. And uh, so I had had my vaccine early, you know, a month, 28 days earlier. So now it was time for me to have my second dose. And they gave me my shot and they said, you may feel a little bit off tomorrow from the vaccine. Well, (laughs) let me tell you, when you have a response to a vaccine, that means that your body is recognizing it and developing the antibodies. So I guess I'm going to have tons of antibodies because I felt like total crap on Friday when I woke up. I was achy. I was running a low-grade fever. I I, I just, I had a headache. I, I just, I felt really miserable for about 12 hours. And then it was like, magically, it was all over. My body must have decided it, it, had the reaction it was supposed to have, and so now I feel fine. Um, But it is not unusual for people to have a general malaise and aches, achiness, and even to run a fever, that's not unusual after the second dose, because now your body is recognized that this is a foreign invader, and now it's like, hmm, we want to make sure that we fight this off. So, Let me tell you, if my reaction was anything like what it feels like to have COVID, I don't want any part of COVID (laughs) because people who have had COVID have told me it's like it hits you in waves up and down and up and down over a period of, of days and weeks that you feel absolutely awful like that and but running a much higher fever. So. I have to say that if this is any, even a hint of what COVID is like, I'm glad I had the vaccine. So even though I'm not generally very proactive in getting vaccines, this is one I definitely was glad that I had. Um, Let's talk about, let's see, a lot of states are actually starting to reopen. Some good news on that front as well. States that have been in lockdown since the beginning, like Massachusetts and Ohio and some of these states that have really had some of the strictest lockdown measures are starting to ease up. And people are like ready to dance in the street like they did after the Super Bowl, which it was like there wasn't like, like. COVID didn't exist in Tampa after the Super Bowl was over. And even though that was probably one of the worst games I've ever seen in my life, uh, I felt very, very bad for the Kansas City Chiefs. It was like, uh, did they show up? I wasn't sure. Tom Brady, while he's the quarterback I love to hate, he he was brilliant. 
He's amazing at 43 years old. I can't even tell you how impressed I am with the performance he had. Um, you know, it just was an amazing thing to watch, even though it was a very sad game. Um, we are going to be taking our first break. So once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry around, and we are live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio tonight, and we will see you on the other side of the break. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And before the break, I was talking about how Super Bowl in Tampa was like COVID didn't even exist. I have to say, they, you know, they actually, it was very impressive the things that they did do right at the Super Bowl. I thought it was really cool how fans were able to have their pictures put on the cardboard cutouts and placed in the stadium seats. Um, they did have 23,000 healthcare workers and first responders who had all been vaccinated in the stadium to see the game, which I thought was fantastic. The um, her who sang America the Beautiful was absolutely incredible. Her voice was fabulous, but she completely blew me away with her guitar performance. I mean, can this girl wail on a guitar? Holy crap, it was absolutely amazing. The performance of the National Anthem was absolutely spectacular. Um, the halftime show was unexpectedly entertaining. I had never heard of The weekend before, but the um, I thought it was a little bit avant-garde, uh, interesting, um, great choreography. They, you know, because typically on the halftime show, they have all these fans in the field making all this noise. They were able to use the entire field for the performance. So the dancers were spread out across the entire field, and they actually did that so amazingly well. Um, never heard of The weekend before, but it was very entertaining. I actually liked it. A lot of people thought it was weird and didn't like it, but, you know, it was kind of, it was different. It wasn't your typical halftime show. I guess that's why some people were disappointed and some people weren't. Um, the flyover with the stealth bomber and uh, the the absolutely was absolutely amazing, um, and obviously uh, the performance by Tom Brady. I no no matter whether you love or hate the man, he's forty three years old. He 
it, his performance is just amazing. He, it's just like I've never seen an athlete in such top condition at that age. Very impressive. And, you know, he, he attributes it to mindset and training and, and, and everything else. But he, he's just amazing. And he took a team from, like, the worst spot to the Super Bowl in one year. So while a lot of people may have thought that the Patriots, Patriots' success was always based on their coach, Valachak, I actually think it's Brady's ability not only to perform himself, but to bring his team together. And football is indeed a, a team sport. Well, talking about team sports, we're coming up on Valentine's Day. <laughs> and, you know, Valentine's Day, ah, love is in the air. And if you have somebody to love, I am so envious. Uh, as a widow alone, it's, a, it's a kind of a sad day for me. But, you know, certainly 2020 has provided lots of challenges for many of us. Um, for many relationships, it has tested relationships beyond where they ever thought they could be tested. But how can we reignite the fire? Well, my guest tonight is somebody really special, and I'm so excited to have her here on, here tonight. Her name is Stacy Mur Murphy. And she is a love and intimacy coach, an international best-selling author, and she really takes high-caliber, you know, if you want high-caliber men in your life, you want to ignite love and, and really keep that passion and fire going, you know, as an international best-selling author, love and mystic, you know, she really uses it's a, it's a powerful cocktail contain, contributing to successful relationships you know she's known as the man expert so she uses humor sacredness sacredness the law of attraction and she teaches men and women and Met women how to find and connect with men that will literally rock your world and I really want some of that make your toes curl and treat you like the goddess you are now how, how about that welcome Stacy I'm so excited to have you here tonight thank you for having me Linda how are you I am wonderful, and you know we're we're like I said we're coming up on Valentine's Day, and everybody wants is wants to be in that mood for love and to feel loved and to know that they deserve to be loved at this point in time. And you know I'm just so excited to have you on the show tonight. But you know being, a, you know a love and intimacy coach, how does one get to become a love and intimacy coach. I mean, where did that come from? Have you always been, been a love and intimacy coach? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> well, I always tell I always tell people because you know I was in I was in corporate America for twenty five years, right? And um, I always say to people, if you were to ask me uh, twelve years ago. If I would be a love and intimacy coach, because I'm a certified sex coach, I'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, what are you thinking? You know, and I would probably say something like, what are you smoking? And things of that stuff. But, uh, <laughs> no, no it's, uh, it, it, it definitely was a shock and surprise to me. And, you know, what I share with a lot of people is, you know, uh, I was good at what I did in corporate. That's what I went to college for. Uh, and everything else, but it wasn't my calling, I guess you would say. And when I was still in corporate, I did some exploring to see, okay, what would be my next act in life? And I, you know, bounced around from one thing to another. And one day I was just, you know, I made a demand of the universe. You know how that goes when you make a demand, right? <laughs> so... I made a demand of the universe to show me what is my next step because I was tired of bopping around from one thing or another that wasn't the thing. And sure enough, a couple of weeks later, I got my answer to that demand that I made of the universe. I mean, Linda, you can just visualize this. I was holding my fist up to the sky 
saying, show me, and everything else. And what the universe showed me was not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I mean, what fun is this, amazing. though? This, this is so much fun, you know, because the yeah. universe will answer you if you ask the right question. And we're going to hear more about yeah. Stacy's journey when we come back from our next break. Uh, once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry around. We are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest, Stacy Murphy. And be sure to come back after the break. <laughs> Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest, Stacy Murphy, the love and intimacy coach. And we are going to talk to you tonight about how to spice up your love life this Valentine's Day. Oh, how much fun! So. You were just sharing how you became a love and intimacy coach and how yeah. you demanded from the universe with your fist in the air, show me what I'm supposed to do, right? <laughs> yeah, so, saying, you know, when you make those demands, you have to be ready for the answer that may come. <laughs> and uh, the answer that came was Tantra. And for those of you listening, you know, Tantra, you know, here in the West, you know, because it's an Eastern tradition, but here in the West, it's considered sacred sexuality, right? And so I was like, what? What? How, how is that the answer to, you know, my question? And, you know, I went to a dear friend and she said, you know, you ask the question, you got the answer. So either move forward and see where it takes you or stay where you're at, but don't complain. And Ooh. I was like, okay <laughs> then. I was like, but that is why I confided in her because I wanted to get the real deal. And so, you know, that was back in 2008. So I went from, as I tell people, I went from pimping shrimp to pimping vibrators. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was in corporate marketing, right? And I was in corporate marketing and, you know, I was working for a restaurant concept. And so... I went from uh, pimp and shrimp to pimp and vibrators, and I would tell everybody, you know what? One is much more enjoyable, and it doesn't put pounds on your waistline. So <laughs> it's like it's so good. And you know, I haven't uh, I haven't turned back. You know, I never turn back. And you know, especially with uh, everything that happened with COVID and all this other stuff like that, I was in a position where my business is pretty much all virtual anyway. So. Uh, nothing switched there, but it was uh, seeing the, the shifts in relationships that uh, occurred, especially uh, in 2020, uh, was extremely interesting, right? Extremely interesting. And a lot of people yeah. really clear. Yeah, they got really clear on uh, their relationships of what they want to do and what they need to do and stuff like that. So. It, uh, it was a very, very interesting ride last year. Very interesting ride. Well, you know, how have the events of 2020 affected relationships? You know, I think one of the things that, you know, people were talking about, there were either going to be a lot of new babies or there were going to be a lot of divorces at the end of this pandemic because of, you know, everybody being forced to be home working from home, teaching their children from home, um, being on top of each other day in and day out. And it's like, you know, a lot of times in relationships, people stop talking to one another. And suddenly, 
you're on top of each other day in and day out it it had to put a lot of strain on relationships I mean it did because what they like you said Linda they were like okay there's going to be a lot of COVID divorces and COVID babies well half of that came true (laughs) Um, okay (laughs) the part that came came true where it was the divorce part um that's what came true and I think especially with uh COVID because we're still dealing with the pandemic it's it's not going away Right. Right. And how how it affects your relationship primarily is, you know, a lot of people got serious or have what I say. They had a coming to Jesus moment, you know, with with their relationship. So if their relationship was good before the pandemic, it got better. If the relationship was on life support, well, it died uh, with the pandemic. So what happens is that is like the nature of things. And then. People became really honest with themselves first, and then they became honest with their partner about what they want to experience in the relationship and what they want moving forward, right? And so, you know, working there. So depending on where on that end of the scale you are kind of really determined, you know, where your relationship was going. But there are some silver linings, though. Um, It wasn't all doom and gloom, and that's what I tried to share even with my own clients, my own students. Not everything was doom and gloom because when something forces you to get honest, that's a good thing because then you'll have good results and a good connection coming out of that. And then if it was a superficial connection, you're like, you know what? I'm going to invest my time with people in relationships that are meaningful, so that was the positive. That was like a really good positive that came out of it is people were spending time with those individuals that mean something to them. And then they reduced their time with people that were either drama driven or whatever. And they were like, okay, I'll talk to you later or some other time. And so that was a positive, whether you're single or with your couple. So my single people, I call them free agents. <laughs> so whether you're a free agent or whether you were a couple, it really, um, that's how it was kind of working in, in relationship and still is up until this point. And so here we are, Valentine's is coming around the corner. And right. people are like, uh, you know, with COVID and everything that's going on, you know, what do we do or how can we, you know, how can, how can we make it, how can we make it special since, you know, we have to do things, different things to go out to eat. Uh, most movie theaters in a lot of states or cities are still closed. You know what I mean? So people are having to readjust, you know, and find right. a new way to have passion. Right. <laughs> you know, um, they, you know, and like we are just this Friday, reopening the restaurants in New York City for indoor dining at 25% capacity. And the restaurateurs in in New York City are just praying that people will actually come into the restaurant for this weekend, which typically is a big weekend for restaurants. So, you know, it's like they're they're just reopening just for this. And, you know, it's, it's been really difficult because I mean if you're home with your kids how do you have that private time with the one with your love <laughs> you know how you know how do you have a private dinner that's going to be part of that relationship so it's like you know I I think that there's got to be some challenges so you know you we're talking about how relationships change did you find that communication was like one of the key pieces of keeping these relationships alive and keeping that um, fire burning well communication like I share with everyone communication is the key to connection and connection is the key to intimacy and the intimacy is key to commitment right so you're not going to be able to have the intimacy and intimacy is being able to see into another person, right? And mm-hmm. so you're not able to have the in- intimacy if you don't have the communication. And with the couples that I work with, or in, even individuals, I have to, that's the first thing I always, 
always have to work with them on. Because here's the other thing, what COVID did and, you know, with the, the stay-at-home orders and things of that nature, people were forced to communicate with each other. <laughs> and yeah. they, were, <laughs> they were forced to communicate with each other and they were finding out, okay, this is not working, right? And other things that they kind of let go underneath the rug, well, they put it all out there to be addressed. And those that have good communication skills, they were able to weather that. Then there were some people, they had challenges with that. But then they came to a coach or a therapist like myself, right? I was very busy last year. They came to a coach or a therapist like myself to help them get through that and to, you know, move forward in their relationship or even make it juicier. And then there were others where, you know, thanks but no thanks kind of kind of situation. But the communication is, is always key. But I want to go back to something that you were saying about, you know, like, okay, everyone's at home, and if they have, if there are kids or other people there, how do they get, you know, some alone time, right? Right. So <laughs> one of the things is, well, here's one thing. I'm going to give a couple of suggestions so if the listeners, you know, want to write this down and stuff like that. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you also is contingent on where you live. So, Linda, you would not be able to do this. But I can do this because I'm in Florida. <laughs> oh. So you're, you're, because you say, okay, where you're at, the restaurants are only like in New York opening up to 25% capacity. And here right. in Florida, it's 100 and stuff. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things where there's definitely stuff that can be done. And I would love to share that with uh, your listeners because one of them may involve your backyard. Oh, well, we're going to get to that after this next break. We are going to be taking our break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is The Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round and we are coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio tonight with my very special guest, Stacy Murphy, who is the love coach. And come back after the break. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round. And we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest, Stacey Murphy, who is teaching us how to spice up your love life this Valentine's Day. And just before the break, we were talking about the challenges of of creating those intimate moments when you are home with your family and other loved ones in the household and how do you make space and time for that intimacy so you had a couple of cool ideas that you wanted to share Stacy yeah. well first you have to you have to make the time and you have to be committed committed to it that it's something that you want to do because this is supposed to it should be fun it should be fun so you know just to kind of continue what we were talking about before like say for example uh, you live in an area which has, you know, good temperature, like here in Florida and stuff like that. One of the things to have some alone time, and also depends on how old your children are in the house. So let's just say they can be by themselves and other people can take care of themselves. Well, one thing is if you're in a warm climate like myself, create a picnic outside in your backyard, right? The other thing you can do is if you have a tent, right? Pitch a, tent in, pitch a tent in your backyard and then create a nice little uh, mini bonfire or whatever the case may be and have that 
experience out there, right? So just like if you were to go to like a drive, uh, a drive-in, you know, a drive-in movie or something like that, and you're with your honey, because those are coming back. So oh yes, they of, are. <laughs> you know? those, those are coming, and it's all about being creative. That's the whole thing: is get outside of the box. And that was one of the other, I guess you would say, silver linings of uh, COVID in 2020. Is it forced people to get outside of the status? well and to be creative and in that creativity people are finding so many new ways to do things that they're actually liking better than how it was before so this is why i say not everything was doom and gloom so like for example the drive-in movie theaters are coming back and that's how some couples are getting that alone getting that alone time right doing uh pitching a tent in your backyard doing a picnic in your backyard so well right now things. i'd have to make an igloo in my backyard and i have enough snow yes. to make an igloo <laughs> you know and then we can play do uh, nose kisses like the eskimos <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, it's like in for, you know, and for, for my, my tribe that's in, you know, colder areas and stuff like that, you just have to be a little bit more creative because I'm originally from New York. Even though I live in Florida now, I'm originally from right. New York City, so I totally get it. Totally, totally get it. And then the other thing, though, even when you're inside, so say, for example, um, and also depends on how, how big your place is. So if you have a big enough um, house, and you live in a cold climate, what happens is turn one of your rooms that you're not using as much, right? There's always, we always have some room in our house that we're not utilizing to its maximum potential, right? So if you have a room in your house that is not being utilized to its maximum potential, turn that room into your playroom. Oh, yes. And, and I love that favorite. concept of play because yes. we, you know, my favorite, I have a, a poster on my wall and it's actually two golden retrievers in the surf, which I have two golden retrievers. But the saying is, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. And play is so important in keeping intimacy alive. It really is. You, that playfulness, that, that, you know, that doing something unexpected and just that playfulness is, is something that really keeps the fire burning. And it should be fun. It should be fun, right? You know, and what happens here is love and intimacy and sex and all that, it should be pleasurable. And if it's not pleasurable for you, you're missing out on a whole lot. But you can find ways for it to be for it to be pleasurable, right? And stuff like that. Because like you said, it is play. And I want everyone to think it's adult play, right? We played when we were kids, right? And as we got older, it almost seems as if the, that fun aspect of us got slapped right out of us, right? And we're like, okay, now we're adults and we, we have serious obligations, yes. We do have serious obligations, but that doesn't mean we have to take everything in life so seriously. And that's what sucks the fun out of being passionate and how to being uh, intimate and how to being seductive and everything else. So I want the listeners to go, okay, we're going to be doing adult play, right? Your, your sandbox has just changed, <laughs> right? So, and your toys have changed, right? Oh, so before yes. You had, before, you had a, before you had a pail and shovel, well, you may have a nice little vibrator or something like that. Who knows, right? Um, before you had a sandbox, now you have a bed. So what happens is it's just the stuff has changed, right, and things of that nature. So, yeah, so yes. definitely do a play, do a playroom in your house because then I can share with some things you could actually do in that playroom. Ooh, have fun. Well, we are going to be taking our next break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round. And we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest, Stacy Murphy, 
who is a love and intimacy coach, and she's steaming my glasses up just with some of the thoughts she's putting in my head, and I'm all by myself, so that's really bad. <laughs> and we will see you on the oh, other side of the, gl- of the break. <laughs> MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio with my very special guest, Stacy Murphy, who is teaching us how to spice up our love life this Valentine's Day. So, are people really excited about Valentine's Day this year? Well, there's like a mixed bag. Right. You know, I have to be honest, you know, being in the middle of a pandemic does kind of put a little damper on things. Right. And stuff like that. Let's just kind of you got to acknowledge that. But a lot of people, though, are really looking forward to Valentine's Day because they want some good news. They want to share and enjoy. They want to be happy, whether you are a free agent or whether you're with a partner, because if you're a free agent, you know, meaning single, it's a day of self-love, right? Send yourself Mm -hmm. some flowers, you know, send yourself some flowers, do your own self-pleasuring and things of that nature, you know, just really treat yourself and feel good about you. So if you are a free agent, you can still celebrate on Valentine's Day, right? So like, say, for example, you have a little honey that is in, in your life, you know, here are some things I wanted to share, like I said, like I said before, of what you can do. Now, before you were to go into your playroom, if you're inside, or you go into your shock of love outside, right? <laughs> if, you're, if you're outside, one of the fun things you can do is have a lover scavenger hunt. So you and your partner can hide things all over your house or your backyard or wherever the case may be for your partner to find. And each little clue can be something special. So one of the things I had, like, say, for example, um, one of the things I was working this out with uh, a husband for it, for his wife. And so he, I was like, okay, what is your wife like? He told me, oh, she really likes this kind of lingerie. She likes getting this kind of perfume. She likes whatever. So I said, okay, and then this is what you're going to do. You're going to buy her a complete outfit, complete lingerie outfit, stockings, the whole entire nine yards. But you're going to leave one shoe there, another shoe someplace else, a pair of stockings someplace else, the under under the phone, one area, and the bra someplace else. And everything is going to then lead where the last destination will be in your playroom, right? So it's, all, it's, quite, it's sort of like, you know, following the breadcrumbs, you know, right? and you're kind of looking. And it's one of those things that is fun. And both partners will be doing this at the same time. And then it leads you either to your shock of love outside or to your playroom inside, right? And so then when you get in there, okay, what do you do from there? So another funny thing or a sad, sexy thing that my partner and I had done in the past was having a sexy bedtime story, all right? So you thought bedtime Ooh. stories were only for kids? Oh, no. They're for adults as well. And I want you to go ahead and take, you can take, you know, a romance novel or an erotic fiction novel. Get one that has short stories. Don't get a whole entire long, long book. But this is how you do that bedtime story. Your partner will read you the story. 
you don't read the story, your partner reads the story to you. And I would advise the listeners to read the story first <laughs> so you can know what it is that you're reading, that your partner will like it. But then here's how you can bring that story to life. In the, in the story, if it says in the story that uh, he took a, a fur mitten and rubbed her arm with it, well, make sure you have a fur mitten so you can rub your partner's arm with it. If the story says she tied him to the bed. Oh, my. <laughs> have, some, have, some, have some little Velcro cuffs so you can tie your man to the bed or tie your woman to the bed. Whatever your, you know, whatever your flavor is, it's, it's all good, right? So whatever the, and then that's how you can actually bring that bedtime story to life. And, I will, and this is why it has to be a short story, because you're not going to get to the end of the story. That's why. And because what happens... Well, you create your you own get... ending. <laughs> you exactly, create your own right? happily ever after. <laughs> yes, yes. And hopefully you'll have a happy ending and all this other stuff like that. And so you create that for yourself. And this is why it has to be a short story, because the book will go flying to the side, and you'll create your own, your own thing there. So that is one thing that is... So much fun. So bedtime stories are not for kids. They're for you, too, as well. So that's Thank one you. thing they can do. Um, let's see. Another fun thing to do is fantasy fun and role play, right? Playing dress up. You did that as kids, right? You do it every Halloween, right? We could play dress up. Well, play dress up here. And so you can, and this is a fun way to get jiggy with it, right? <laughs> and everything else. So you want to bring a fantasy to life. And doing that bedtime story is a kind of a quasi way of doing that fantasy fun and role play. But get into a role that you know your partner and you would find fun. And each of you get into a role, not just one person do this. So, for example, ladies, they love their men with Chippendales, you know. So go get, go get your bow tie and get yourself some black pants. And kind of do a little dance, right, for for your for your your lady. And let me tell you this, you know, in the summer, I think it was like the last summer Olympics, all the ladies' hearts were just throbbing when Mr. Tonga, <laughs> the Tonga man, came. Oh out. yeah. All the men. Oh yeah. He was, okay, you remember him, right, Linda? Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So guys, all you need to do is get your grass skirt, get some oil to slick your body down, make sure you shave any hair that needs to be shaved, and then you can be ready for a slip and slide, and you can have a good time. Because this is not about having, you know, bust a move or anything else like that. Just the, just the act of doing it is really going to be meaningful to your partner, right? It doesn't, you don't, you don't have to be swinging on a pole and, you know, having all these crazy moves and all this other stuff. Just actually doing it and having fun as you're doing it and laughing at yourself, that is what this is all about. This is what brings the intimacy and the play and the juiciness that's there, right? And so what happens is you don't have to have a body like Mr. Tonga, but the whole thing is you even wanting to, to even do that. So even getting into stuff like that, um, another tip, if I have time to give another one, and that yes. one is being a dessert platter. Mm. Oh, yeah. I've had that platter. experience in my lifetime, and that was quite quite fun. <laughs> yes, and so this is a kind of dessert platter. It's like you'll be eating the pl the food off of your partner's body. That kind of dessert platter. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you're saying dessert platter, it wasn't necessarily feeding, just feeding each other the, the food, even though that will be included in there. But on this particular one is, say, for example, one partner would lie down. It could be on the floor by the fireplace, especially if you're in those cold areas. It would be perfect. Have it by the fireplace and everything else like that. Now, if you don't have that, you can actually have one partner laying on a table. Just make sure it's a very sturdy table. <laughs> Uh, not, not, not a glass table, and you have your partner laying down, and then you put, one partner will place all the little dessert stuff on your partner's body, right? 
And then here's the thing. And then you eat the dessert off of your partner's body, but you don't use your hands. Yes. Wow. But you don't use your hands. You can only use your, your mouth. Oh, and that is so delicious. <laughs> and and, and very, 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 um, yeah, erogenous. Yes, it's very <laughs> exciting. I can uh, attest to that, having done that at least once in my lifetime. <laughs> maybe, maybe more, but yes. And the thing is, it's you're right. The laughter and the giggling and just having that fun is just so important. We are going to be taking our final break tonight, and I don't really want this show to be over because I'm having so much fun with Stacy tonight. I, once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest, Stacy Murphy, who's been telling us how to spice up our love life this Valentine's Day, and we will be, see you on the other side of the break. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest, Stacey Murphy, who is telling us and sharing with us how we can spice up our love lives this Valentine's Day. And, you know, before I uh, bring Stacey back on, I just have to share a cute little story. Um, my parents were married for 66 years, um, and they were very quiet people. They, I never heard them argue in their entire married life that I lived with them. Um, and at my niece's wedding, they did the anniversary dance, and of course, they were the longest married couple at the wedding. So they asked for their advice for the newlyweds. And my mother responded, never go to bed angry. And my father's answer was, spend a lot of time in bed. So, while it was not a vision that I always had of my mother and father, it obviously was something that they both shared all their 66 years of their married life. So it was very special to me to hear that. And, you know, spicing up your love life and keeping love alive with that spice, I think, is so, so important. And, and remembering how to play. So, Stacy, how can people get in touch with you? Because, obviously, I think you have a lot to offer to so many of us. <laughs> So how can people get in touch with you? Well, if you want to learn more about me and the work that I do, you can find me on the web at thevixenacademy.com. And I'll repeat that. It's thevixenacademy.com. And Vixen stands for women who are vivacious, intelligent, extraordinary, empowered, and they have no one to be naughty as well as nice. Right, Ooh. and that's what a vixen is, right? So you can catch me there. Also on my YouTube channel, I have a, a good following there on YouTube. So you can find Vixen Academy on uh, YouTube, and you can also email me uh, directly at vixenacademy at gmail dot com. And those are the various ways in which they can uh, reach me. And if I have, if we have time, I'd love to share this last little thing okay. that uh, people can do. And just in case, especially this is really appropriate, especially now, if you don't want to go out to eat, 
Um, there is one seduction routine I teach my clients called the three course meal of seduction, where you are the the appetizer, the dinner, and the dessert. Ooh. <laughs> so, and some of the things we can't talk about on radio <laughs> Ooh. that is included in that. But what happens is, yes, you're the three course meal of seduction, where not only are you feasting on delectable foods, right? That could be aphrodisiacs. You'll be feasting on each other, right? So take that dessert platter to a whole new level. A whole oh, new level. My. And oh, my. Oh, yes. <laughs> so well, I know, I am so excited. Level. I'm so excited that you got you really gave us so many ideas on how we can spice up our love life this Valentine's Day and every day of the year. This is not just something for Valentine's Day because intimacy and love is something that is so important to who we are as human beings that it's something that we can implement on a weekly basis on a you know little things we can do on a daily basis to keep that spark and fire alive. And, you know, for, from my point of view, I, I'm so grateful that you were on the show tonight because truly what you shared tonight was so much fun. And I really, I want to thank you for being my guest tonight. Um, I want to remind everybody, don't let a disaster blindside you. Get your free planning roadmap and disaster checklist today at thecrisisplanner.com. And be sure to tune in next week as we explore getting to the heart of the matter, Women's Heart Month, with guests from the National Heart Association. This is Linda Fostek, and you've been listening to The Linda Fostek Show Get off the worry around on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. Until next week, maintain your healthy distancing. Have some hot, sexy love on Valentine's Day. Be safe out there. Happy planning. No worries. Thank you and good night. You've been listening to The Linda Fostek Show. Join Linda each week for interesting topics such as in the news, extreme prepping, and home sweet home. Right here on the Linda Fostek Show. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.